Hi everyone, welcome to introductory Python tutorials where we are putting a special focus on image processing related tasks. In the last video, we looked at multi-class semantic segmentation using UNet where we trained a model using 128 by 128 size images or patches if you would like to call it. But in reality, you would like to apply the trained model to large images. And the focus of this tutorial is to show you a couple of ways that where you can take this 128 by 128 trained model and segment larger images. And the answer is definitely not resizing your large images because then you'll end up with a 128 by 128 uh, size small image. Or the answer is not uh, just applying this to a large image and hoping that it works. The answer is chopping the images into the same size, cropping. For classification, you can resize images. A large cat image, you can try to resize and then classify the entire image but semantic segmentation is classifying individual pixels so every pixel matters the information surrounding every pixel matters so the best way to do this is to crop your large image to a size that got uh, you know where the model got trained on predict it put them back together and it'll show you a couple of easy ways to do that first of all the strategy like i already mentioned is take your input image that you would like to segment using the model. At this point, we already have a trained model. We're not talking about training. We are just talking about predicting segmenting. And divide your image into patches of whatever size the image got trained on. In our case, the model was trained on 128. So this is how the image looks like. If I divide this large image, I have a bunch of uh, 128 by 128. I believe I have 36 of these, 128 by 128, six along X and six along Y. And for each of these images, like patches i would segment them okay and i would put those together to create a large montage now one thing uh, it may look like okay you have yellow here why do you not have yellow there this is just a way of matplotlib plotting because i don't have uh, four phases four classes in this region just for those of you wondering okay why do i only have these because in that patch i do not have one of the classes that's missing so it automatically scaled it to show all the colors in different ways so don't worry about that just go ahead put them together so you get this type of uh, prediction but one thing you need to probably worry about is okay i'm dividing my image into 128 patch but what about certain areas near edges where it's important for it to know what's happening in the next patch right if you have something here the prediction probability of this area goes up if it knows what's happening in the next patch so around the edges my point is around the edges you may have some edge effects because it doesn't have the full context so what do you do that in that case it's uh, it can be very useful to divide your images instead of 128 by 128 but with some overlap between them make the predictions and when you blend them blend them such a way that you're blending the uh, it in a meaningful way that's exactly what these guys have done go to github.com to this page although i should warn you that this code that you find there has a couple of mistakes that i pointed out and i corrected and i, I I'll, I'll share the corrected code as part of this this uh, video but you can always go there and uh, and and download their uh, the originals and it's very important for you to refer to these guys and especially since they have uh, some sort of a license like MIT license I think where you need to put their header you know the license on top of uh, on top of your code but all things aside this is an amazing amazing approach go ahead and read the paper okay so I'm going to show you two ways using the smoothly blending so you don't have the edge effect so you have a continuous image their examples they were showing satellite images but it doesn't matter it works on very large images and so on. So especially if you work on whole slide images and you train your model on 256 by 256, but you want to apply that to this entire thing, this can be a nice way. Okay, so let's jump into the code now. And before jumping into the code, let me just show you their web page uh, for smoothly blend image patches. So you can see that uh, in one example they show right there. You see how you have the hard edges and then with the smooth blending, you have very nice continuum over there. Uh, in the example I'm going to show you, you won't see such a drastic difference because both dividing the patches or smooth blending, both are working equally fine. Subtle changes, but we can't see it. But that's why I wanted to show you this. And uh, if you want to fix the issues yourself, like if you go to issues up here, 
on GitHub. Just click on any of these. I think I left a message on most of these right there. This is my, uh, this is my uh, comment on this code and uh, go ahead and uh, if you if you make these changes then it should work fine or you can just use the one i'm going to share either way now let's go ahead and jump into our code but where did we left off last video here you have a 128 by 128 patch and we know that our model is doing a great job on these patches so let's go ahead and apply it to a large image so for that let's jump into this week's or this tutorial's code and uh, I'm going to use Patchify as usual to divide my images or you can write your own code to divide your images into little blocks and then convert this. Patchify makes it easy to convert your large images into smaller patches, although it has its limitations. Yeah, you'll find that out if you use it. So let's go ahead and connect the runtime. Let me make sure we are using GPU because for prediction, we do need GPU. If you don't need it, don't use it. Please leave that for others to use because this is free on Google. Okay, so once this is connected, we are going to install Patchify in this environment. Go ahead and pip install. It should be pretty quick. And once that's installed, go ahead and import Patchify, Unpatchify. Patchify obviously patch, you know, create extract patches, Unpatchify joins the patches together. So let's go ahead and import that, OpenCV and others. Now let's go ahead and uh, load our large image and uh, apply Patchify to it onto the large image. What size? 128 by 128 with a step of 128 because our model got trained on 128 size uh, patches. And then I'm going to print the large image shape and the patches. So we get a nice idea of what we are talking about. So my large image is 768 by 768. If you divide 768 by 128, you get six. So I have six multiplied by six, 36 patches of 128 in my large image. Now my goal is to read one of these at a time, segment it, store it and then put everything back together in the same order that's the goal so first of all go ahead and uh, uh, print your large image this is the image that i just showed you in the presentation this is the image we're working with and this is just the image part right so now let's go ahead and plot the patches right we have uh, six by six patches so this part of the code goes through each one of those and uh, plots it i already showed you as part of the presentation but i just want to make sure we have a flow right here. There you go. Let's load the model. This is the model we got from the last tutorial, tutorial 119 for 50 epochs. So we are loading that model. And once that's loaded, we are going to go through each of these six patches in X and in Y or I and J, if you want to call it. And then for each of these patches, first of all, you need to normalize it, right? Divide by 255. That's exactly what we have done for training sorry i don't want to go through the training code again because i'm pretty sure you watched it if not this video kind of makes sense but not full sense so we are normalizing the values or scaling the values to uh, right here getting the dimensions correct and then i'm doing model.predict on single patch yeah and then uh, and then getting an argmax same steps right here getting an argmax right there right to get exactly what the pixel value corresponds to. Is it zero, one, or two, or three? We have four classes. And then I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, appending this into a list and convert the list into an array and then reshape the array so it's ready for us. So let's do all of that. This may take a few, uh, I should say a few seconds. Initially, it takes a while for it to start, jumpstart the GPU, and then it should go pretty fast. And once they are reshaped, let's go ahead and look at what that reshaped shape is and then uh, plot the output. And that is exactly what I showed you earlier here. We should have six by six, 128 by 128 patches for the output, okay? And then we are going to reconstruct the image by unpatchifying it. Unpatchify brings it back to my 768 by 768 size. So these are the steps. If you would like to just go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and divide these into patches, apply the apply the prediction. Okay, so it's it should be done right now. Let's go ahead and the predicted patches shape is six by six, one twenty eight. Now let's go ahead and plot these exactly the way we plotted our images, just so we can see. This is exactly the same output I showed you earlier. Now 
reconstructed image. We are going to unpatchify it. Unpatchify what? Unpatchify or reshaped this one, this data into our original image shape. That's what this line does. If you want, you can go ahead and save this to your local drive and then let's plot the combined image right there. And there is your prediction. That looks very nice actually. I don't see edge effects or anything because apparently our model is doing an excellent job. What if it's not? What if you have uh, some issues around the border? borders? I'm pretty sure this has issues. It's just that I can't see it. It'd be nice to save the image, zoom in and inspect it. I'll leave that to you. So now in the next part, let's do the smooth tile predictions the, that these guys actually uh, used. Okay, so for that, I have uh, saved this. Uh, what is the best way? Uh, let me open this. Let me open this uh, smooth tiled predictions. By the way, let's open this on the left hand side and open my drive. Where did I say? Uh, sorry, I should have been a bit prepared. Collab notebooks, my drive, collab notebooks. And here I should have uh, I should have my smooth tile predictions dot pi. This is just a Python file, right? So all I did is uh, imported that right here. From smooth tile predictions, I'm going to import this. Uh, so let me show you the Python file. It is part of our collab notebooks. I'm opening this in Drive, by the way, and simple tile predictions.py. Yeah. So let's go ahead and open this, and uh, it should be in Google Docs. And again, please make sure if you copy this, put the MIT license up there so people know. I put my author name right there because I changed this comp very heavily. I dropped a few functions that are not necessary and everything from the original code. Anyway, I'll let you go through these, but the most important part right here is the last part where they define the predict image with smooth windowing function okay and this takes an input image the window size and uh, number of subdivisions and number of classes and prediction function prediction function is just model dot uh, predict it takes that that's exactly what we are doing right here from smooth style predictions i'm importing the the function i just showed you so let's uh, and uh, i'm mounting my uh, directory there so i can just go ahead and if you don't do that then uh, yeah, this doesn't work yeah you have to do that on a local system it, it, uh, it it's very easy it just looks at whatever the um, you know wherever that file is and then uh, this, this this step is very easy but on colab you have to uh, first of all import sys and insert the path right there so it knows that hey this is where i need to import this library from yeah that's exactly what these two lines are in case you don't know okay and now let's lo uh, load the lar large image these lines are exactly same as above we are not changing anything and now just go ahead and print the shape this is 768 by 768 by 1 and let's define our path size as 128 number of classes as 4 because these are the ones that we need here let's go ahead and load this one more time our model the saved model so so far nothing tricky everything is very straightforward this is the part where uh, the smooth blending this is so easy by the way the smooth blending input needs to be in this format 768 whatever x y and channels it cannot be number of images x y channels because you're doing one image at a time you put if you have multiple large images you want to segment put that in a for loop OK, uh, so this is very important. Otherwise, it throws an error. OK, so that's my large image scaled. Large image scaled with that shape. I, I put notes wherever I could. Window size is my patch size, 128. Number of subdivisions defines the overlap between the two images so it can calculate the smooth blending part. Two is OK. Two sounds to be a good starting point, And this needs to be a even number. So you can try two, four, and so on. Number of classes is four in our case, and the predict function is for each image subdivision, model.predict on that subdivision. That's what this is. So when I run it, it's a bit slow because it's not just dividing images into patches. It's doing rotation, it's doing inversion. So it's it's actually making sure that it is doing a good job. So go ahead and read that, that uh, you know, the, the entire description on GitHub. It's very, very uh, useful. So it's predicting 
And once it's done, let's go ahead and look at the final shape of the predicted image. So here you're not, you're not dealing with dividing images into patches and everything yourself. This function is taking care of it in the background. Okay, after it's done, let's predict the output. Again, output is 768 by 768 by four. Why four? Again, we have four classes. We need to do argmax to bring it back into our classification. That's exactly what we're doing here. Okay, now you can save your images, but let's go ahead and plot it. Plot all of these. Testing image, prediction without smooth blending, prediction with smooth blending. So there it is. Original image without smooth blending, with smooth blending. They both look almost identical in this case. But in for your samples, again, it depends on how difficult it is to segment regions around the borders. Okay, so I think this is all I plan on showing for this tutorial. Again, uh, this makes it easy for you to apply uh, your train model to large images. I definitely recommend using the smooth blending. Uh, it works without using smooth blending on this data set, but it may not work on your data set. So I definitely recommend using smooth blending. I'll remember to share both this and the smooth blending code so you can, you can work with this uh, on your own data sets. Thank you guys again, and please like this video if you think this uh, is informative. Subscribe to this channel and let's again meet in the next tutorial.